Okay, some of you are probably saying, yeah, it's nice to know that EDIUS can capture tape. Should I need to capture tape sometime? But uh, isn't uh, tape dead? And uh, in fact, I was in Bangkok recently, I headed out into the bush for a shoot and realized that I maybe didn't have enough tape for my shoot. And so I went to one of the largest centers for electronics in Bangkok. There's about six floors of uh, stores that uh, deal with cameras and computers. And uh, I went to about a hundred shops looking for tape and everywhere I went everybody said, uh, sorry sir, finished. And uh, so it may be indeed that we are headed to a tapeless society. And so we're going to need to know how to just simply import media into our project. And uh, so let's go take a look at a couple of different ways that we can bring media into our computer where the files have already been transferred to our hard drives from various types of cameras that are tapeless. Let's maybe just stretch out our bin here a little bit so we can see a little better what we're doing. Maybe we'll change our monitor to a single mode so we have that, a little bit more room there and there's actually several different ways that you can import media one way is through a menu option and i believe that there are several different places uh, in our menu options where we can actually uh, import media one is under the logo here in the bin window under functions and you'll see that uh, there is an option there to add files or you can use the keyboard shortcut control O. One point on this uh, keyboard shortcut however that you should know is that the control O keyboard shortcut only works if your focus is in the bin window. In other words if your focus is on the timeline if you have been working on the timeline and you do a control O uh, EDIUS is going to want to actually open a project, open a different project and we don't want that. So the only way that the keyboard shortcut works for uh, importing media or opening files to bring into your system to your project, your focus first has to be in the bin window and you might ask well how do I get my focus to the bin window? Well you do that simply by just clicking once in the bin window and now your focus is there and when you do a control O now uh, you're going to be asked to open files. Okay, so several different ways. Again, you can uh, use your menu option here to add file. You can use the control O keyboard shortcut if your focus is in the bin window. Um, and apparently, <laughs> if you just double click in the bin window, that also opens files. Hmm, interesting. You always find new ways to do things every time you uh, open EDIUS. What I simply do uh, when I want to add media is I use this little icon symbol up here. Uh, just click on that once and then you are given a dialog box to find folders uh, where your media has already been stored. And let's take a look first at uh, some media that I have transferred to my hard drives from a Canon 7D camera. Uh, many of you uh, might have something like this, uh, an SLR camera that actually records video and uh, saves it to flashcards and then with a card reader you can transfer those uh, video clips to your hard drive and then by using one of your options to add media um, and, and navigating to the folder where your video clips have been stored, uh, it's very easy to import. You simply select the files that you want to import and uh, you can do a batch import and EDIUS brings in the files. My Canon 7D camera uses a movie file uh, format and so the video clips that come in are in a movie file format. And this is not a native format to EDIUS so depending on the speed of your computer these movie files that you bring in from one of your SLR cameras may not actually play in real time on uh, on your timeline. Now there are several different things that you can do to get it to play in real time. Uh, one is that you could simply right click on the clip and render the clip and uh, when that clip has finished rendering then it will play on the timeline in real time. Another option that you can do with some of these file formats that are not native to Canopus is to convert them to a Canopus codec. 
And you can convert any video file in your bin to the Canopus codec so that it'll play uh, in real time. You can either do it uh, one clip at a time or you can do a batch convert and we'll show you how to do that in a minute. Uh, but uh, go ahead and just right click on the clip itself, go to convert and file. And uh, just make sure that you're saving it to a hard drive, something other than your system drive and uh, maybe make a folder, I call it converts, and go ahead and hit save. And uh, EDIUS will go ahead and convert that MOV file to the Canopus uh, HQ codec. Perhaps something we should have pointed out, let's just cancel this out and take a look at this um, window again convert file something you want to make sure before you go ahead and do the conversion is that you are actually saving to the right file format down here at the bottom of the dialog box uh, where it says save as type make sure it says Canopus HQ online quality if you do the little down arrow you'll see that there are a number of different options you can choose you could actually down convert to standard definition when you uh, do this, uh, or you could um, convert it to a Canopus lossless format, or an uncompressed RGB. But for editing purposes uh, in a Canopus uh, EDIUS project, uh, we're uh, most likely wanting to choose the Canopus HQ online quality. And then again, just to make sure up here that you're saving to a hard drive that is something other than your system drive. And then go ahead and hit save. And depending on the size of the file, uh, it may take some time. If you're doing a number of these conversions, it's probably best to set it up as a batch convert. Uh, maybe something you can set up to do overnight. And once EDIUS has made the conversion, it will go ahead and actually place that uh, new converted clip down at the bottom of your clips in the bin. And now you can drag that down to the timeline to see if it actually... Uh, responds a little bit better on your timeline to see if it plays in real time. And sure enough it does. And so it's often a good idea to convert uh, these files. You'll be able to work with them on your timeline a lot better. And uh, you can do a batch convert. Let's uh, show you that. So just go ahead and select all of your files. Do a right click on any one of the files go to convert and this time instead of convert file choose file batch again the two things that you want to confirm is to make sure that you are saving it to the correct file format which is Canopus HQ online quality and then <clears throat> make sure that you're saving it to a hard drive that has lots of space because these HQ files these AVI files can be quite large and so if you're setting up a bin full of uh, clips to be converted overnight, you don't want to wake up in the morning and find out that you ran out of space on your hard drive. So make sure you find a hard drive on your system that still has lots of room left on it. Then go ahead and use the Save button and uh, go have a coffee break uh, or take a nap. Uh, go to bed and in the morning you'll have all of your files converted. Okay, one other point on these MOV files that come over from some of these SLR cameras. If you're working in an older version of EDIUS, these files may not come in to EDIUS in the correct color space. And uh, so I highly recommend that you upgrade your version of EDIUS to at least version 5.51. It was at the 5.51 version of the program that EDIUS made some corrections to the uh, system in order to take in these files in the correct color space. So if you find that your um, MOV files coming in from like Canon products, uh, the SLRs are not looking just quite right on your timeline, uh, just go ahead and check what version you're running. And if you are running something uh, older than 5.51, you'll want to upgrade that. And if it's not possible for you to update and you're still working with some of these files, uh, there is a tutorial online at ediustips.com that uh, gives some workarounds for that, uh, show you how you can uh, with your effects folder, uh, go down and under color correction. Uh, there is a tutorial there that shows you how you can use uh, the YUV curve, apply it to your MOV file, 
um, then under the information palette, uh, double click on the UIV curve and make uh, some adjustments there. That will correct the color space of these MOV files coming in from the SLR cameras. But if you can get a hold of 5.51, then all of these uh, problems have been resolved. Okay, let's just go ahead and move these over to a folder that we've created for Canon 7D and import some files from another camera. Uh, one thing I always like to do when I'm creating a bin file structure is to create a uh, bin that's just for sequences. Sometimes if we end up having 10, 15 different sequences in one project, uh, if we're not careful, they can get spread out all over uh, a number of different files, and if you need to find and open a specific sequence, uh, it can be difficult to find later. So uh, go ahead and create a sequences folder and uh, drop your sequence in there. Okay, let's go ahead now then and uh, bring in some media from another tapeless camera. I have a Sony Handycam palm quarter that I like to play around with. It's a, a great little camera for getting family events. Here they are here, Handycam files. And you'll notice that they also are saved to an MPEG file, M2T uh, format. So it's a very similar format to the HDV uh, format. Let's just go ahead and open up some of these and see how they play natively in EDIUS. And you'll see that they come in fine, but uh, as we go ahead and uh, drop one of these on the timeline and try and play it, We'll see it's struggling to play in real time. And you'll find as you bring in different file formats from a variety of different tapeless cameras that you may indeed uh, have difficulty playing them natively on the timeline. You know, it seems like almost every day someone comes out with a new tapeless camera that uses a new file format of some kind. And uh, so it's difficult to, for Canopus uh, to keep up with all of the different file formats that come out. So it's always a good idea to, once you bring this media in, if it doesn't play nicely on your timeline, to go ahead and do a batch convert like we showed you a minute ago. Select your files, convert, and do a batch convert. Make sure you've got Canopus HQ Online Quality, AVI, and you're saving to a hard drive with lots of space. Now some of you might be asking, how did you get the media from your Handycam hard drive camera to the hard drive of your computer? Well that's something that, uh, depending on your camera, you may have to check the manual of your camera. In fact, my Handycam came with a dedicated proprietary software that I needed to install on my computer before I could uh, transfer the files. And so in many cases, uh, some of these uh, prosumer cameras, consumer cameras, it may not be as easy as just hooking up your camera to your computer and, and uh, accessing it like another hard drive. You may actually have to read your manual and um, maybe even install some software on your computer in order for your computer to recognize your camera and then transfer your media from your camera to your hard drive. And once it's on the hard drives of your computer, you should be able to simply import the media using one of these options for adding files. Under EDIUS, Functions, Add File, under this icon, and uh, the keyboard shortcut, Control-O, if your focus is on your bin. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, make a new folder, call it Handycam. And bring all of these clips over to Handycam. Now, of course, projects wouldn't be complete without uh, some music tracks, some, maybe some narration, uh, perhaps some graphic files and that type of things. So let's go ahead and import uh, some of those types of files. EDIUS will read most types of audio files. Uh, however, it does prefer to work with WAV files for audio files. So if you can possibly get your audio into a WAV format, uh, EDIUS will like that. Uh, let's go ahead and bring in some music. I believe I have some music tracks uh, on this disc. Let's go ahead and get some from Network Music. So we'll just go ahead and bring in a few for now as samples. And uh, we see some audio files uh, showing up. Let's go ahead and make a folder for that. Select 
select all, drag them into music. What other types of media could we import into a project? Well, let's go after some still shots. Let's see, I believe I have some JPEGs. Uh, select all, hit open, and let Edius import the JPEGs. Now, besides music, we probably uh, might want to go after some narration. Now, Edius does allow you to record narration while you're working with the timeline. Uh, I believe if you look at your icon strip here, you'll see uh, an icon with a microphone, and uh, this will bring up a tool where you can actually record while you're watching your video to do just a little bit of a voiceover explanation of the video. However, when you're working on a more serious project, you'll probably want to record your narration in a professional sound booth. Or if uh, you have uh, hired voice talent, say on voice123.com, and you've asked them to send you their files uh, uh, over the internet perhaps, and uh, you've saved them to your hard drive, well now you need to go and import these into your project. So let's go find uh, the narration. I believe I have some here. And bring in our narration. Edius uh, drops those into the bottom of our uh, bin that's open. Let's maybe uh, go ahead and uh, make a new folder for that. So our narration doesn't get lost. Let's put it in its folder. And uh, we should probably make a folder for these stills. And um, let's see what else we could bring in. Let's see what Edius does with some graphic files. Uh, I believe I have some graphics here. All right. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and make a folder for graphics. And while we're thinking of it, we might as well go ahead and add uh, some color bars into our graphics folder. And I also like to have uh, a color mat, a black color mat. I'll just show you what we did here again. We're, we often want to create a black mat to work with. And you can do that under the color bars icon. Just uh, click it once and you'll see that you have the option of making a color mat. And you can actually make any type of color there. You could be a red mat or a green mat, blue mat. But I mostly just like to have a black mat and that comes by default. So just go ahead and hit OK and that will bring in a black mat. And that'll give us a start on our graphics as we get into our project. There'll be lots of other types of graphics that we'll want to bring into our graphics folder. Lower thirds, title bars, uh, website uh, information, telephone information, that type of different thing if you're working on a TV spot or a promotional. So we'll come back to graphics in another tutorial. And that's probably it for the different types of media that uh, we might want to import. Uh, perhaps I'll maybe just grab one more thing. Um, some media that I've captured from uh, tape from a previous project perhaps we might want to add to this project. Uh, here's a project I worked on uh, recently it has uh, clips from uh, videotape that I shot in Africa and let's just go ahead and import the first tape. We can see Africa 1001 for the first tape uh, so we'll take it right down to where it goes to 2 and just uh, import those. Okay, that should give you a good idea of how you can import media into your project. Again, the main icon you're looking for is this little one here, Add File. Or if you're a keyboard shortcut junkie, Control O. Uh, or you can also find it under the EDIUS logo, under Functions, Add File.